Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on clinical SAS STTM programming. In this video, we will see how to program RFP ENDTC variable in STTM DM dataset. So let us start with the description. Let us go to the background. So SDTM DM domain is used to capture some important demographic related variables and certain key date variables for the subject. And RFP ENDTC is one such date variable. It is used to capture the date or date time of the end of participation of a subject. So at the end of the study, this will be equivalent to the end of study date for the subject when the subject either chose to discontinue or completed the study. So this variable will generally be used in downstream ADAM programming to identify the last known date of subject on study. So some specification authors of STTM prefer keeping this variable equivalent to the end of study date from a disposition page while others prefer deriving it based on all applicable date variables in study. If the first approach, which is keeping the end of study date in RFP and DTC variable, the last known date will be derived in ADAM datasets using all applicable date variables from SDTM datasets. So what do we learn in this lesson? So in this lesson, we will see a programming approach to derive RFP and DTC variable using applicable raw date variables. Now let us take a look at the program that can be used to derive this. So we have the specification which says RFP and DTC date of time of end of participation. So the derivation logic written by the specification author says populate with the date latest date value across all date variables in raw data sets. So for this example I have used a few raw data sets. So if you see here the first step that we are trying to do is pull all raw date variable values into a single variable so that we can identify the latest state across all dates. So for that we are making use of set statement to append the different date variables from all the applicable raw data sets. So here if you see in adverse events we will have both start date and end date. So we are appending it twice. So for the first time we are using the raw date value which is corresponding to the start of the adverse events and renaming it to a date variable and keeping only the required variables here and in the second instance where an adverse event data set is used so we are using the value from AEE and DT raw which is nothing but the adverse event end date but again renaming it to the date variable so we are renaming these all these date variables across data set to the common variable called date so that we'll be able to easily identify the date across all these different variables in a common variable. Otherwise, we'll have all these variables present in the data set, which we are appending, will have in separate variables, which will be of no value add. So for that, we are bringing individual date values into a common variable and then keeping only the required variables. So one other thing to note that whenever we are renaming an existing variable and also using the keep is equal to option, we need to specify the name of the original variable not the newly created or newly renamed value so here if you see though we are renaming aestdt underscore raw to date so in the keep option we need to specify the name of the original variable which was aestdt underscore raw so here we have appended all the applicable raw date raw data sets and associated date variables say for example here in enrollment so we have three date variables icdt underscore raw enrldt underscore raw and randdt underscore raw so we are appending it thrice once for each date variable so similarly we will have to use for other data sets as well and one other option that i have used here is nds name is equal to option on the set statement so here i have creating a temporary variable named underscore x uh, to store the name of the input data set that is corresponding to a particular observation so here in the next statement i have creating a variable named in ds name and assigning the temporary value temporary variable underscore x value to that variable so we'll see in a while how what will be the values look like in this in ds name variable so let us go and see how the all dates 01 data set would look like when this step is executed so here if you see this is our all date 01 so we have 
study pt and then date variable so we have used the nds name option to create a temporary variable named underscore x and then created a variable called nds name is nds name and i use the value from underscore x to assign to this variable so if you see nds name will have the uh, two level data set name work dot adverse so and here if you see this set of observations are coming from the data set named work dot ecg similarly for this set of observations are coming from a data set named work dot enrollment so this is this can be used to identify the name of the input data set that is contributing to a particular observation and then after that in order to pick the latest date so what we are trying to do here is so here the dates are not in iso format and cannot be used for sorting so for that purpose the created date variable is now converted to an iso variable so here we are just trying to convert it into iso format using the code which we have been showing so far in other videos so here the first step is to extract the date component and then convert it into a uh, zero padded value in in the form of day c and for month so we have extracted the second word and then converted it to 0, 01 0, 02 and until 12 and for year we are extracting it and then concatenating the year component month component and day component with a hyphen in between and then once we have the date in iso format we can sort the data based on subject and date, date c which is I, the dates in iso 0 so 8601 format though they are in character can be used to sort chronologically which means the lowest date value will come on top and the highest date value will come at the end when we sort it based on ascending date value and here we are considering only the date values which are not missing so and then after that we are picking the last record for each subject so the date c value on the last record is nothing but the RFP and DTC for that subject. So here we are keeping the subject related variables and the required RFP and DTC variable. So once we derive this, this can be merged back onto the other derived variables uh, as part of DM dataset programming. So let us take a look at the all date 02 and then all date 03 dataset as well. So here if you see, we have converted the raw date value into ISO 8601 format. First Jan 2010 is converted to 2010-01 for month and hyphen 01 for date. And similarly, 5th Jan is now converted to 2010-01-05. So these dates will then be used uh, in identifying the RFP and DTC. So in all date 03, we have sorted the records based on subject and this date C. So if here, if you see for subject 1001, so 1st Jan, 1st Jan, 1st Jan, 1st Jan, 4th Jan, 5th Jan, and then this is a next subject. So enrollment, 1st Jan, 3rd Jan. So these are sorted chronologically with the lowest date values coming on top, the highest date values coming at the end. So these can be then used to identify the filter the last record and rename the, or assign the date C values to RFP and DTC variable and subset that and use in our DM dataset programming. So this is how we can program RFP and DTC variable in HDTM DM domain using manual approach. In a subsequent video, we will see how to identify these all date variables in a dynamic approach using metadata datasets. So thank you for watching and keep learning.